Boogaloo, another wonderful wrestle running for me and for you. It's time for Ask Lou Anything. And that's what y'all did. You asked me, and I think a few of y'all was trying to stir the shit. And I can't even be mad at that because you know what? I like to stir the shit myself. So let's stir some shit. Let's get on it, man. Let's see what's going on. Let's get to these questions. And I'll give you the best answers I can possibly provide. All righty. Let's see here. Casey Glinda writes in. If you could go back and change one thing about your life since you started with RSW, what would it be? And I kind of thought about that. And my original answer was, you know what, I wouldn't change a thing. That's how you learn lessons, you know. And that's a cheap answer. I got to thinking a little bit more on that, Cassie. And one thing... I uh, wouldn't have let Justin Case know where I lived. I would have never put the dude over. Um, <laughs> we see how that worked out for everybody. I think I got the worst of it. The, the idiot called CPS on me. Made a false, very false, the falsest of reports. My kids are still with me. Uh, CPS knew it was bullshit that day. So yeah, right out the gate. Definitely would have changed that. Would have never befriended that dude. Uh, he would have never known where I live, and I really hate that I put him over. Uh, I really regret that, so fuck that guy. Um, another one, I, I think I, I should have stepped back and uh, stayed out of fantasy world. Uh, wrestling, hey man, wrestling's been my fucking go-to since I was a kid, and I really just kind of, I lived it up, man, and I wish I would have stepped back a little bit and saw the forest for the trees, I wish it would have took more time for my family while it was going on and everything. Uh, and just not been so constant. Wrestling, 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 wrestling. I, I would have changed it a bit. Just a little bit. I would have stepped back a little bit. Good questions. I'm sure I'll think of uh, more, more answers to that. But that's what I got at the moment for you. Next question. Uh, good friend Casey Seifert writes in the West Virginia Troopers Association needs your support this year the gold level 75 silver's 25 and bronze is 10 now spooky can you be the hero this year and go for the gold or am I going to send you out the bronze yeah we're going to need the bronze uh that's an old telemarketing buddy of mine yeah man I was a telemarketer from the time I was 16 till the time goodness gracious like 30 off and on, uh, yeah, that that was my career path. <laughs> Telemarketing's wild, man. I, I think I need to give that its own podcast sometimes, man. It was just a party, just go to work, party, and make prank phone calls. Uh, as long as you didn't treat it too seriously. You want to know a story about telemarketing? I'll tell you a story. You want to hear a story? I got. Once you say I script so many times, you can say it in your sleep, and that's literally what I did. One day at work, I got a little tired. And I started dozing off. So I had a system where the call would come in and I'd open my eye just a little bit just to see the name on the screen. And then I'd go through the pitch and the rebuttals. Well, I guess as I was going through the rebuttals, I slipped a little further into my sleep and I started dreaming. And they played me back the recording when they fired me. <laughs> and uh, swear to God, it's the truth. I said... Uh, Ma'am, I shook the police officer's hand, and his hand fell off. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, they hired me back a month later. It's all good. Like I say, uh, telemarketing times were good times. So, there. Now you know a little bit of the background of Spooky Lou. I was a piece of shit telemarketer. What else we got? Tyler Jacks, ladies and gentlemen. What you think of that foot stomp? I assume he means uh, putting Rucker's chair, foot in a chair, coming off the top rope and snapping his ankle. Uh, I didn't like it. I hated it. Rucker's still my boy, regardless of anything. Um, Tyler Jacks did make a few good points on the podcast when he was on here before. So check that out. Check that out. Still love you, Tyler, but you're a bit of a shithead. You're being a bit of a shithead. You're showing your ass. Grace Duncan Harris writes in, ladies and gentlemen. Great friend of the show, man. She has been our lifeline while I'm on this break from wrestling. Uh, still recording the shows, doing a tip-top job, sending them over to me. I'm putting them up. God bless you, Grace. Uh, an asset to indie wrestling if there ever was one. 
What are you doing on your break to stay relevant? Okay, uh, I think we're, I know where this is coming from, so let's just uh, go down the rabbit hole a little bit. All right, so Grace knows a little bit of the story because I talked to Grace. Um, I asked for a break from RSW, and <laughs> I, I think the break's permanent. <laughs> Within minutes of me asking for said break, it was like they had a button, a coverall button. Like they, they had a plan in place and they went, go, go, hit the button. And that button removed me from every group. It took away all my passwords. They immediately wanted everything back. Uh, it, so yeah, I think the break's permanent, Grace. But what am I doing to stay relevant? That's a good question. Because how do you stay relevant without looking desperate? A pretty fine line, right? So... I don't know. I'm still doing the podcast. We started the IWYGP where we're checking out other independent promotions from around the world, making a competition out of it. Believe me, as far as the podcast, man, a couple weeks ago, I thought I had the ultimate lineup, man. I had the lineup of all lineups, and a couple folks came through. A couple folks said, yeah, man, I got you, and then never heard another word, and that's okay. A few folks, we're going to circle back and get them on this week, hopefully. The podcast's frustrating. It's it's always been frustrating. That's nothing new, man. People have lives of their own. I have lives of my own. And it is what it is. We're going to stay relevant, by God. We're going to keep doing it. Grace had a few questions, though. What was my favorite match of 2024? I know I'm forgetting a million of them because, believe me, while I was on the road weekend after weekend, everything's just a blur. It all blends together. But uh, looking back, two really stick out to me. One was Rucker and Callie and Buck Cannon. Great match. Crowd was on fire. I got to do my little deal at the end, so I'm a little biased. I got to bang his head off the table. That was fun. Um, and then another one uh, uh, should be dead obvious. Still super, super important to me, regardless of how things panned out. Super important uh, to me, Marcus Twist returning to RSW, defeating Lane Cowley at Fairmont State. That's probably got to take the cake, man. That, that's one of my favorite matches ever, just for the, uh, you know, for the reasons, <laughs> for all the reasons. Good question. She has a few. She has a couple more. What am I most looking forward to in 2025? Changing the fucking game. That's what I'm looking forward to. Changing the landscape, making things different than what they are right now. That's what I'm looking forward to. Big things are happening in West Virginia. Indie wrestling, we need you, Spooky Lou. Well, thank you, Grace. We need you as well. I appreciate the hell out of you. Brian Faust writes in. You want to know what he had to say? Will Lane Cali ever grow a set? Hmm. How to address this moron. Not Brian. Brian, great guy. You know who I'm talking about. Lane Cowley, current PWL champion. The fans are saying you don't have a set. Now, I will say, he has his fans that will take up for him. Believe me, anytime I make a post, anytime I drop a video, uh, they come at me. <laughs> so Lane has his fans that will say that he has a set. Uh, I still see cowardly bullshit. I still see, and it just kind of depends on the day. Another day, he'll just forearm you in the back of the head and beat you. He won the T, uh, PWL title. I don't know. Nobody's seen the damn match, but I've heard what happened. I know Tyler Jacks helped him win. So that's some cowardly shit. Will he ever grow a set? I don't know, man. I, I really don't. I doubt it. Uh, I highly doubt it. Um, he's a piece of shit. I guarantee he's a piece of shit. And he'll always be a piece of shit. Let's get to the next question. Let's see. What we got? What we got? John Harris writes in. All right. What's up, John? This is a this is a good one. Okay. So independent wrestling has stepped up and lots of new talent coming and going. We got a lot of shows to see and so many wrestlers one one time here in West Virginia and never seen again. Is this a promotion thing or just not enough money to come to get them to come in your eyes. Okay. There's a lot of variables in that, John. Um, a lot of these guys, the names, the bigger names, they're booked, man. They're, uh, 
they got other commitments and they're probably going to go somewhere that has the bigger crowd might even pay them a little bit more um yeah because believe me wrestlers have their set rates but not all promoters are paying the set rate so they're going to go where the money is they're going to go where they can sell some merch i don't know if you can blame the promotions though uh like i say a lot of these guys are just busy uh personal stuff happens sure you might you know they might have a shitty experience at a promotion say i'm never going back to that shithole again that could happen as well there's a lot of variables in that um i've said it a million times on this show i'll say it again west virginia we're making our own names man i'm so proud of that uh people are coming to see the anthony ruckers the tyler jackses the as much as i hate to say it there's fans buying tickets to even see Lane Cowley. It's fucking crazy. And you got your air dues ands, Saturday night special. We could go on all day. West Virginia is making their own names. But as me and Tyler Jacks were discussing on the prior um, podcast, it does good to make those bring on those names that have made it and have been around to help the boys and to help the wrestlers. Iron sharpens iron. There's a lot you can learn. And, uh, so, yeah, I think that kind of covers that. What else do we got? Anthony Rucker writes in, Who is your favorite wrestler, and why is it Anthony Rucker? You know what? I think I think you're in the discussion, Ruck. I really do. You are definitely one of my favorites. You uh, continue to impress, banger after banger. Uh, of course, I'm a little biased because I know the drive. I know the passion. I know you're a good dude. Um... <laughs> Y'all quit giving Rucker shit, man. He's a baby face. Like, why are we hating? Um, uh, listen, if you know him, then you can talk shit. The people talking shit don't know Rucker, unfortunately. Um, I know Rucker. I know. I, I've defended him on here so many times. First one to show up, still busting his ass, putting in the miles, putting in the work. He works his ass off to get what he gets. Yes, he's being rewarded, and I think he should be. I don't care if it has only been a year. He's put in more work in that year than a lot of wrestlers have put in in five years, in ten years. I promise you that. There's uh, more passion there. There's more love. There's more drive. And believe me, I promise you, Rucker's not just helping himself. He's helping many others in the process. So, uh, God bless you, Ruck. You're in the discussion, Ruck. Uh, one that's always been in the discussion for years, Violent Vance Desmond, one of my all-timers, still putting out banger after banger. Another one that uh, has really impressed me in the past couple years, whether it's through the promos, the ring work, whatever. Uh, Matthew Taylor. Can't deny Matthew Taylor. So, uh there's, there's three to come to mind right now, man. Really, uh, no no denying them. Shane Kryzak. Why can I not say Shane Kryzak, Shane Kryzak, Shane Kryzak? And I think a lot of folks will tell you that. Again, great promo. The ring work. Holy shit. Good dude. Uh, man, one of my favorite memories this year was sitting uh, doing commentary with Kryzak. That was a blast. One of my favorite podcasts this year was with Shane Kryzak. Uh, super honor and pleasure to work with that guy promise you and uh we've got one more i believe yes one more are you done with wrestling nope <laughs> nope uh going back to what i was talking about earlier i simply asked for a break i really don't want to get into the details um because yeah there's some oh, let's shoot a little bit there's some bad feelings on both sides but regardless of regardless I wouldn't have the experiences I've had uh, two of the best years of my life. Um, I'm super grateful, super grateful. So I'm not going to go into why I asked for the break. But uh, like I say, the break kind of turned into, well, you're out of here. Finally got rid of your ass. That's the way I look at it, at least. And I think that's one guy which, hell, uh, (laughs) I gave him enough hell in those two years. I can kind of understand it. But again, um, I'm not going to get into it too much. I think I have my points uh, that I could put out there if I wanted, but I won't. I won't because at the end of the day, whether I'm happy with somebody, unhappy, furious, sad, mad, whatever, 
I still wouldn't have had the experiences that I had, the opportunities I had. Uh, now, granted, let me say, I made a lot of those opportunities myself. Um, I won't go down the road too far. I know that I helped the cause. Um, I know that they helped my cause. So, again, I, I really think when it comes to me and them, you're kind of splitting hairs when it comes down to it. Uh, if you really look at it under a microscope, we're, we're splitting hairs on who got over on the other, okay? So I'm not going to dog them. Um, it is what it is. Here we go, man. Let's start a new adventure. What's 2025 going to bring? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be nuts. I promise you that. There's already a few plans in place to where Spooky Lou will stay relevant. I promise you that. We're going to keep doing the podcast, keep doing our thing. But as far as the wrestling business, oh, man, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get silly. I'm excited for you guys to see it. I'm excited to live it. Um, believe me, big things in the works. Big things. Tell you what, since we're out of questions, this has been on my mind recently. You want to hear a story? All right. I'm going to give you the story, but I can't give you the name. It goes back to that respect deal that I was talking about with RSW. Um Somebody I respect just from watching on TV for years, you know. And uh, they've done me some solids here and there. Um, I was to reach out to them to see if they were interested in working in RSW. They gave me a crazy price. Uh, not even a worker, mind you. Um, they might have had a couple matches. But uh, mainly known as more of a manager, referee type um it's been everywhere i'll give them that been around since the 70s uh done their thing and um, i don't want to give you too many clues because you'll figure it out but they've done their thing they were an ecw icon not an icon but they were a part of ecw anyway i was to reach out to them ask if uh they would be interested if not if they'd be interested because <laughs> believe me they were interested what the rate would be the rate was crazy the rate, shit, I'll tell you the rate. The rate was $750 plus uh, travel and uh, lodging. So not only that, you got to get them on a plane and you got to provide them a place to stay. He told me that he's cut me a break. It's usually a grand, but I'm his friend, <laughs> okay? Um, so I run it by the office, and they said, that's crazy. I agreed. I agreed. I said, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> shit, it's not my money. Even if I don't agree, who the hell's going to pay this $750, right? I didn't think anything else of it. That was a couple months ago. I got a phone call this week. I looked at my phone, and it said the name. I said, well, shit, I got to take this. I like this guy. I wonder what he wants. Hey, I got you penciled in for uh, November something or other. I think it's 27th. And I remember the conversation. We were trying to figure out what dates he would be open for the RSW dates. And I said, oh, we do have a show then. Da, da, da. Well, I guess he... I'm not even guessing that he thought that meant he was on the show. He uh, wrote it down, either A, forgot, or B, trying to scam me. I don't know. Um, so he said, yeah, man, um, so I have you written down here, da, da, da. I said, well, I'm going to be honest with you. They didn't want to pay the money, um, and it's not my money. I told you, I'm not the guy that runs the show. I'm just the guy reaching out. Oh, okay, well, uh, you know, you might have to get a sponsor or something because I, I charge a cancellation fee, and since you're my buddy, it'll only be $100. <laughs> what? Well, number one, it's independent wrestling. There's no contracts. Uh, I didn't sign anything. Uh, it wasn't even in text messages. It was a phone call, so good luck proving that. Oop, I outed myself on the podcast. She got me. But, um, yeah, it, it just, it's weird, man. Like, wrestling, it, again, it goes back to my fantasy world shit and how much love I have for it and the respect and da-da-da. And um, it just, it really... <laughs> it really threw me for a loop because I didn't see this happening. So now they're thinking I should pay him $100 when we never agreed to shit. I promise you that. Even when I was talking to younger guys to bring them in that, you know, 20 30 bucks, whatever. I never agreed to shit. I said, da 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 talk to the people above me. Then we make it happen. But um, I never, not for anybody, not, not, for anybody that I agree, you're on the show, come on down. Never, not once did I do that. 
So shame on you, scammer. Shame on you. That wasn't nice. But, uh, yeah. As far as what the future holds, man, just hang in there. 2025, it's going to be nuts. I'll hang in there for me, I know, right? All spooky lose going. It sucks so bad. Looks like things are going pretty well. Good. Good to see it. Glad to see it. You'll never hear me run down RSW, man. Uh, I have friends that work there, regardless of how I feel about management or certain people there. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best. Uh, again, I wouldn't have the experiences, the times. I wouldn't have made those friends or who I thought was friends. I will say uh, <laughs> I've heard uh, a lot more from folks in other promotions that I've worked with over the RSW guys. That is what it is. I'm sure they don't know what the hell is going on. I've heard the rumor. I've heard the rumor. I've heard it said that Spooky Lou is holding footage hostage. What the fuck? <laughs> um, the whole reason I thought I could be an asset is I could film, edit, get this footage out, and I think I proved that. So anybody that thinks I'm holding footage hostage, hit me up. You got a match of yours that you want? Hit me up. I'll send it over to you. I'm not holding footage hostage. I uh, don't know where that came from. Uh, it's silly. Very silly. Like, I think that's the biggest misconception out there right now, if, if that is being said. And, and it came from a couple people, a couple trusted sources, so I think it is being said. It is what it is, man. Things have been more dramatic. Things have been worse. I'm doing just fine, and I promise you we're going to be just fine. I've uh, got my hands in a couple pots. Uh, things are going to get interesting come 2025. That was the whole thing, man. I said, I just need a break. Need to spend time with my family. I need to step back for a second. And uh, the whole reason I asked for a break, because it was wrestling 24-7. Um, honest to God, man, every day editing, editing, editing. And it could be argued that, uh, you know, the editing helped me just as much as it did them. And that's true. But at the same time, that editing did help you too. It got the stuff out there. So, you know, it is what it is. And it's not just the editing. It's the time away from the families. I remember Krampus Mania. I was so excited to get that out. And uh, I did put it off, put it off, because I kind of bluffed myself into that editing situation. But I think I did a good job. And uh, Christmas Eve, I was editing Krampus Mania to make sure to get it out uh, on time for Christmas Day. And that's just shit like that, man. Um, I wish I would have stepped back and... That's what we're doing. We're stepping back, but we still got to keep the channel alive. We still got to stay relevant, right? So we're making new connections every day, not just in the wrestling world, in the world of film, in the world of music, in the world of video games. Believe me, uh, we're just going to kind of coast through the year. I apologize. There was no Halloween special or anything crazy. This time last year, shit, we was ready for EIW. So it's definitely a, a change of pace. Um, it sucks. It sucks sitting at home and uh, watching, seeing them do their thing, and I'm not there. Especially the first show, I had to, you know, sit home. And again, I did it. I asked for the break, and the original plan was to stay out until December or January. But uh, again, <laughs> as far as RSW goes, I don't think it's, I'm going to be coming back there. Which, okay, is what it is. They're not the only uh, fish in the sea. Plenty of fishes in the sea. And uh, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. And plus, I think the channel kind of catered to them, but at the same time, that was my home promotion. Again, splitting hairs, splitting hairs when it comes to that. So we're going to spotlight some new promotions. We're going to spotlight some new wrestlers. We're going to spotlight uh, all kinds. Man, believe me, uh, we're working on some things. I promise you that. I wish I could say more, but... Uh, I think you're going to enjoy some surprises. There's some surprises coming along. And I'm glad everybody's doing well. Uh, believe me. I love y'all to death. Uh, to the ones that have reached out. The people with the supportive comments. Means more than you know. Uh, it ain't the end. We're just kicking back and coasting for a minute. We're catching our breath. And believe me, when 2025 rolls around, it's going to get silly. It's going to get real silly. So what i got for y'all man i appreciate the questions we'll stay relevant um some may say i'm a nobody i don't know i think i'm a bit of a somebody 
Uh, the same people calling me the nobody or the same people telling me a year ago I was the king of indie wrestling. So, is what it is. I still love you. It's what I got. It's what I got. I'm rambling again. 25 minutes. I think we've done our piece. I think I've put out there what I wanted to put out there. As soon as I turn this off, I'll remember a few other things I wanted to say. But, we'll save that for another day. What we got coming up on the podcast this week? I'll announce it right now. We got Big Black Carl. That's right. Big Black Carl. One half of the PWL Tag Team Champions. Black Ice. Blake, Big Black Carl returning to the show before he heads down to North Carolina to beat Lane Cowley for the PWL title. Oh, I'm excited for that. We're finally going to get that choke slam. I know it. Choke slam him hard. We're going to have Big Black Carl on the show. We got some surprise guests. You wait and see. Wait and see. Uh, we're going to go back to the IWYGP. The qualifiers are still happening. We still got a list, baby. Once we get through that, I'm sure there'll be plenty more to look at. This IWYGP is going to go on for a while, for a long time. And I'm excited for it. Uh, getting to check out new promotions already. We got Scotia Pro uh, that's qualified. I was really impressed with their production, with the in ring product, with everything. The promos were good. So that's what that show's about, it's finding those diamonds in the rough. And at the same time, I'm not looking to bury anybody, but I would like to give some feedback to help every promotion grow on YouTube. That's where my expertise is. Uh, I didn't get 5,000 subscribers by accident. I like to think I know a bit about what I'm doing as far as indie wrestling goes on YouTube. So uh, to those promotions that I can help, say, hey, you know, Maybe use a roaming cam. Maybe don't show your commentators. Maybe don't show the national anthem. Crazy shit like that. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm here for. So it'll be fun. It's going to be a good time. We're looking for special guest judges. You want to be a judge? Hit me up, man. That's something, you know. If you, That's something where the podcast, I like to have people that are in the business, whether it be a worker, referee, commentator, so we can you know, talk about the business. But when it comes to this show, I like to think, uh, if you watch wrestling on YouTube, then you qualify for a judge. If that makes sense. So, it'll be a little bit more open on that. We'll have some guest judges coming in, and we're going to have some fun with it. You know how we do. Treat each other with kindness and respect. Go out there and live your dreams. Don't take no shit from nobody. Do it your way, by God. We only got one shot at this. Do it upright. That's what the fuck Spooky Lou's going to do. I promise you that. I love all of you. Every single one of you. Even the ones you think I don't love, I still love you and appreciate you. I promise you that. I miss a lot of you to the ones not returning my messages. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Just love one another. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Again, we got one shot at it, man. Appreciate the hell out of you. I love you. Stay tuned. So much coming down the pike. I promise you that. Stay tuned, man. I love you. We're out of here.